Ironclad. Part 2. Costumes. Ironclad shows us the familiar Hollywood image of medieval times in which all peasants are covered in mud and everyone wears brown, unless they're baddies, in which case they wear black. Ugh. I appreciate that any film has a finite budget, and I happily accept that the costumes worn by multitudes of extras are not going to be top-notch. They don't have to be, but, but when I see close-ups of characters, well, I'd like a bit more pride taken. The days in which knitted string was an acceptable stand-in for male have, I think, passed. I recall years ago going to a costumer to hire some male armour costumes, and I discovered that it was all just string, and I was told that string would look more like male than actual male. No, it doesn't. Now, some of the mail was metal links, but much wasn't. And similarly, fiberglass helmets might be fine for the background extras, but don't show me big close-ups of fiberglass helmets, especially when the modern painter started to chip off them. And this guy's lost his nose guard. I'm always disappointed too to see modern aluminium pop rivets and metal grommets on costume. There was an armour called Brigandine, which had metal rivet heads showing on the front. But this isn't it. This is clearly thin, flexible leather with a few modern metal additions, which would be of no protective value to speak of. I know of no evidence for medieval metal grommets, and uh, as is often the case in films, these ones aren't even being used for lacing. Are we supposed to think that that's armour? Oh, yes. Now, the costumes you see in this scene are so bad that, frankly, I'm embarrassed for the actors. The chap on the left here is encountered wearing this outfit as his normal day-to-day -day clothing. Would you? Would anyone? I mean, presumably he's a fan of heavy metal rock music, which would explain the bizarre studs on his trousers. Now, is there anything good to say about these costumes? Are they authentic? Not in the slightest. Do they look cool? No. Do they look elegant? No. Do they look practical? Comfortable? Durable? Certainly not. They remind me strongly of the costumes that uh, students doing live-action roleplay make for themselves. You know, they go into the local leather shop and they buy a big bag of offcuts and then lace them all together to make a big ragtag fantasy thing that quickly falls apart. I'm not criticising the students. I did the same myself. But for the principal characters of a feature film, this look does not cut it. The heavy metal rock fantasy pops up all over the place. Now, the makeup department here has made a great, gaping, grisly gash in this chap's face, but I still found myself looking at the one lonely heavy metal stud on his cloth sleeve and trying to work out what on earth the wardrobe department thought that this represented. Don't worry, with this stud, you'll be invulnerable. Now, this film was made post Braveheart, and so the makers seemed to think that uh, we would accept the idea of a big baddie leader's painting blue camouflage patterns on himself for the final battle. Sorry, but wrong period and wrong nation. That's ancient Picts. There is a further daft cinema tradition that before the big final fight, knights strip down rather than armour up. Here we see the main hero who, knowing that this is the final desperate fight, has exposed his head so that he can fight better. When did he think that some head protection was more appropriate than now? Is this just to convince us that no stunt doubles were used? This is what King John's mercenaries looked like in the film. Yes, that's right. A lot of wild, barbaric, pagan, dark, fur-clad Vikings. Vikings! With long, messy hair. Now, I, I could start by nitpicking these Viking Vikings! Vikings! Costumes. That buckle is wrong, those shields look suspect, that armour just looks made up. And we have no reason to believe that Vikings... Vikings! Vikings! thank you, had hair that wasn't as neat as anyone else's. Uh, this bulky fur-clad look is just a costumer's way of making them look bigger, but more to the point, whereas history does record that John had some Danish mercenaries in his army, he didn't have a Viking... Vikings! That's enough. Army. He, uh, he had mercenaries from the Flemish lands, Provence and Aquitaine. The Danes by this period were all Christian, and their war gear would have made them next to indistinguishable from any other soldiers of the era. And even more to the point, there weren't any Vikings! Vikings! I have created a monster. In this period, the age of the Vikings had ended over a century earlier. Vikings. Vikings. There's a scene in which the king goes for a contemplative walk, and we see a big close-up of his boots, and what? A heel? Seriously, a heel on a boot in AD 1215. Heels won't appear until the late Tudor period, four centuries later. They gave him heels? What could be worse? John, King of England. Oh, hello. No. Uh, no, my friend, I'm a bit busy right now. Yes. 
Oh, I'm at Rochester. The siege, yeah. Well, not very well, actually. No. No. Sorry, did you did you say pigs? Uh huh. Well, how will that work? Uh huh. Are you sure? <laughs> 